right, we have a question revolving around cheese balls. So uh, we have a two inch diameter, a four inch diameter, and a six inch diameter cheese ball. And we're told that we're gonna smush all of these together like Play-Doh to create like a giant cheese ball. And the question is, what will the approximate diameter of that new cheese ball be? Okay, so they give us a little tip about how to think about this by telling us the volume of a sphere is equal to four thirds pi r cubed. The reason they're telling us this is that the volume is the, is the constant here. So if I mush all these cheese balls together, the total volume of the new cheese ball will be equal to the volume of cheese ball one plus cheese ball two plus cheese ball three. So the volume of cheese ball one plus cheese ball three, we'll call this new cheese ball, cheese ball four. So it's going to look like this. And then we're going to have to use that information to back into the diameter. So if I have diameters of two, four, and six, that means that the volumes of these uh, three cheese balls are four thirds pi times the radius cubed. And the radius is going to be one, two, and three. So we get uh, four thirds pi times one cubed, which is just one, plus four thirds pi times two cubed, which is eight, plus four thirds pi times three cubed, which is 27. And when we have addition in between um, numbers with with common elements, and the common element here is four thirds pi. If we have addition or subtraction, we can distribute. And so we're gonna take one plus eight plus 27. And when we add up the interior here, we get nine plus 27, which is 36. So we have four thirds pi times 36. And that is the volume of the new shape. Now the new shape, has a volume that's equivalent to four thirds pi r cubed, which means four thirds pi's are gonna cancel. And we just have r cubed equals 36. And if r cubed equals 36, that means that we have r equals the cube root of 36. So if we have a radius of cube root 36, that means the diameter is going to be two times root 36. And that gives us answer choice E as our answer. So just following the math logically, don't forget you're trying to solve 2R. And so I think we should really highlight that before we dive into the math so we don't forget because it's a multi-step process. And at the end of your math, you don't want to forget where you're trying to go with this thing. So they tipped us with the volume calculation. That told us this was something to do with volume. Um, it's good to see it done out once. That will help you going forward if you had no idea how to solve this the first time. So I think it's useful to practice stuff like this, put it on a note card if you forget it. And just remember that what we're really, what's our bridge here? The bridge is the total volume is gonna equal the total volume of those three.